<laughs> ah, crap. Round two. <laughs> Oopsie. I'm playing on the other side here and ignoring what's going on. Good morning, everyone. Uh, believe it or not, uh, yesterday, about 9.30, we were on our way to the grocery store. Well, for the second time, because the first time I forgot my wallet and my mask, so we had to come back home. I was pretending that we lived in a normal time. Yeah, right. Anyway, no, I just forgot. And uh, all of a sudden I went, hey, I forgot to do Facebook Live this morning. I don't know what day of the week it is, but yes, yesterday was Monday and I was supposed to do it. And uh, yeah, oops. Anyway, so um, yeah, I have an hour and a half long interview this afternoon that will be filmed. So I had to wear red that shows up nicely, done some makeup and, you know, pull my hair back and look halfway decent. I have to, one of the things I have to do today is set up a studio because I don't have a good background. I need to have my books and stuff in the background. So anyway, go figure it out. 32 degrees, 32 degrees feels like 22 in the Shenandoah Valley. Yeah. I haven't been outside enough to know what it's doing yet, but I'm sure it'll be cold and icky at the barn. After three days of rain, it's, it's a mud pit, but they did put insulation on the foundation yesterday. So God bless those guys. They work in the mud. Uh, so good morning from Pakistan. Wow. We have a wide reach here, folks. Latvia. Okay. This is a little crazy. Um, Georgia. Anyway, so I didn't give you the update about Mittens. The supporters got an update. Uh, so Mittens the kitty, the big fat cat, um, went to the orthopedist on Friday. He was a very good boy. They did not date him. And I have to tell you guys, it was so funny because I wrote out my piece of paper and I had all of his records and his last lab work and his little history of when he uh, destroyed his leg and, you know, how I thought he did it and all that kind of stuff. And uh, at the bottom, I wrote on, I don't know where it is, I wrote on there, do not uh, give anything orally or by injection without speaking to me first. And so when I talked to the, and their technician was great, his name was Andrew, which it's easy for me to remember because that's my son. So uh, they, they were very professional, very good. We didn't have to wait in the car for two hours like the last trip we took was doing. Um, so it was, it was great and they were very nice. And uh, when the doctor called me, she said, boy, that leg is really unstable. It's, you know, definitely me. Hey, she's crazy on her PEA. She's crazy. I think, I think we need to, and she's having a little SM attack right now. We need, we need to go down for that one. Uh, so, but she said to me, um, so this note on the bottom where it says, don't give anything orally or by injection without asking, does that mean I have to call you the day of surgery and ask about every single medication we want to give? I said, no, not really, but let's go over them. So she was great. She went over every single medication, asked permission for all the different pain meds that they might use. The She told me what kind of anesthesia they were getting. She knew I was a veterinarian. Didn't tell her that I do this, but I did tell her I was a holistic veterinarian, so I didn't want, you know, things that weren't necessary. So uh, uh, we went over everything, and I was very happy with their anesthetic protocol. I was very happy with uh, the pain meds that they were going to use. Uh, the biggest problem, even though Mittens is confined to a room, they really like him in a crate for like six to eight weeks. That's not going to go over well, so we're going we're gonna to work on that and figure that one out. Uh, but she said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is cold. <laughs> um, so, but she said, so this notice on the bottom of the page where it says, don't give anything. She said, is there a particular reason why you wrote that? And I said, oh yeah, because I'm a holistic veterinarian. I do a lot of online consultations. And so I get to see records from all over the world. And I said, you would be amazed at how many animals are given oral flea and tick medications, injections of all kinds of crazy things um, without the owner's permission, vaccines without the owner's permission. And she was flabbergasted. She was like, who would do that? I said, you would be amazed. I said, sick animals go into animal hospitals 
for vomiting and diarrhea and come out with 17 vaccines on board that the owner didn't request because they were due. Uh, and she said, oh, we would never do that. I said, yeah, well, that's why I chose you guys. And that's why, you know, I tell all of my followers when you are just trying to convince Shana that she needs to calm down. <laughs> I'm telling you, these animals are crazy here. Uh, Stewie and George, nuts playing all the time. Uh, so uh, I, I, I said to her, look, I tell all of my followers, when you are taking your animal to the veterinarian, particularly with this curbside stuff that we're doing, but even not with curbside, take a list of exactly what you want done and put on there things that you don't want done and be very specific about this is what I'm here for. This is the only thing you have permission to do without speaking to me uh, because it is amazing what will happen behind closed doors um, or without your permission. So uh, hopefully you find good practices with doctors that you know and like and trust um, and you can have a, a good working arrangement. But particularly if you're going to um, somebody that you're not familiar with or a different doctor in the practice, make sure that they understand what it is that you want done for your pet and what you don't want done for your pet. And um, hopefully they can agree to that. So we started this process last January and then COVID shut it all down. It's the start process, not the actual transplants. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking about you guys with that. Really, that's, a, that's a big ordeal. Um, Beth Green might have had two kidney transplants. Wow. Uh, one of my um, classmates from vet school, uh, has had a pancreatic transplant and he had a kidney transplant. Um, he's no longer diabetic and uh, he never got married because he thought he was going to die young and he's healthier than he's ever been. <laughs> it's amazing what science can do. Uh, your new vet sends out a fillable questionnaire before every appointment. They read it carefully and know what and what not to do, which is awesome. Your vet is not letting you into the clinic with a mask. That's Good. Um, everything that I've noticed down here and everything I've seen down here and every website I've looked at down here is still uh, curbside. And I know my old practices in New Jersey are still curbside. I don't know how long it'll be that. And um, how do you get an appointment with me? Well, the only type of appointment you'll get with me is for an online consultation. And uh, for that, you just need to email consult at drjudymorgan.com. Um, uh, did I send those you said, uh, Cavaliers for Gwen? Oh, okay. I'll talk about those at a different time. I'll post it. All right. So uh, mitten surgery is scheduled for next Tuesday, the 9th. Um, so we shall see what happens to that. And you and I are going to have to figure out how to rearrange the kitty cat room. Uh, I think I told you guys they have this cat tree that is four levels tall that goes all the way up to the ceiling. And Mitten's favorite place, of course, is the very, very top. And he's not going to be allowed to do that. So I think maybe we will, um, we will flip the tree on its side. So they can kind of nest in there, but they can't climb anything. Uh, your dog does well on Desmopressin. That's great, Michelle. I'm glad you got an answer on that. So um, your vet sneaks you through the back door. Your Ruby is having radiation on her regrowing lipoma on his kidney. Any suggestions? Diet? Boy, I would just definitely be doing some kidney support. Um, and some immune support for that radiation. So see, she's still barking. She's crazy. I don't know what her deal is. She's running around like a nutcase. I'm telling you, these supplements, plus her SM, she's going crazy. And the weather's nice today. I don't know. Okay. Uh, you're back to curbside in Virginia. Yeah, I, I think that curbside is um, kind of here to stay at least till spring. We'll see. All right. Hey, frustration yesterday. Spent an hour trying to get a hold of Bank of America to change the bank account that the RV payments come out of. Anybody know how to get a hold of anybody at Bank of America? What a, what a frustration. I uh, finally sent them a nasty email and said, somebody needs to get a hold of me or you're not getting paid. Because that bank account's closing. <laughs> it's not going to be any money. So frustrating. I have to go through this with every bank. Every bank. <laughs> Really ER gave your dog methadone and she died. Oh my gosh. Cardiac arrest. I guess it kind of depends what she was there for. 
how does this system pay for? Uh, I've never used methadone. George had it once when he was in excruciating pain. It worked great. So I don't know. Your vets seem to prefer not having pet parents inside. Well, it was interesting at the beginning. We said, wow, this is a lot easier without the owners in the building. And then after a while, it's like, you know what? This is a pain in the butt not being able to easily talk to the owners and uh, see facial expressions and and some some of the animal some of the animals were better without their owners, but a lot of them were worse without their owners. So, okay, uh, Jim had the same problem with BOA closing his mom's account. <sighs> Literally, it's circular. Press one for this. Press two for this. You go through five, and then it says if none of those were correct, here's seven more. And you listen to all seven and go, they're not correct either. Never got a hold of anybody. How? Oh my. Okay, everybody have a great day. <laughs>